So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to move to our fourth and final contestant, and it's Matthew Gill, the Managing Director of White Rock Minerals. Matt, uh, it's all yours. Just let me know when you start. Thanks, Gavin. Uh, I trust everyone can see my screen. So thanks, yes. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and to the judges, I realise I don't have a lot of time, so I'll go relatively quickly. Uh, but my strong recommendation would be is you invest your $1 million in, into White Rock. Uh, we have three projects. Why you should invest in White Rock. I mentioned that we have three commodities, three great jurisdictions, uh, multiple opportunities. Uh, the three projects we have are 100% owned. We've got a great land package here in Victoria. We've got a terrific land package covering two geological domains in central Alaska. And we've also got an advanced gold and silver project in northern New South Wales. So the Woods Point Gold Project, we only acquired that less than two months ago. Fantastic land package, underexplored, with a great historical gold mine called Morning Star that produced almost an ounce per ton. We also have a terrific land package in Alaska. It's high grade silver zinc VMS as well as a large IRGS gold target. Uh, and we've just finished an $8 million uh, exploration program there this season. Uh, it was our fourth season there. And lastly, but never to forget our Mount Carrington project, Jork Resources, Jork Reserve for Gold, on a mining lease where we get free carried um, through the development and environmental impact stages. As I mentioned, the Jork Resources, if you combine the silver, the gold and the lead, it's the equivalent of about 3 million ounces of gold. For a market cap of around 40 million, um, the underlying asset base, I think, is a significant uh, advantage for White Rock and its shareholders in its own right. The Wood Point Gold Project the photo is the gold mine, Morning Star, the gold plant, 800 metre deep shaft. Uh, it came with a 670 square kilometre land package, central Victoria, not similar rock to Fosterville that most people will have heard of. Uh, and we've identified significant targets already in their own right. Uh, regional exploration, as I've just touched on, there's also the mine exploration. Uh, great history, operating shaft, operating gold processing plant. We've just announced only this morning the commencement of 11,000 metre drilling program into the gap zone. Above that gap zone, over half a million ounces were produced. Below that gap zone, over 300,000 ounces were produced. Why is there a gap? That's what our drilling will find out. Red Mountain, very imaginatively called. We sit 100 kilometres due south of Fairbanks. One minute to go, Matt. Great land package, significant maiden book resource, running just over 600 grams per tonne silver equivalent. Comes from just two, two deposits. Most people might be aware the VMS is coming, camps coming across as we have multiple targets still to drill. But we also sit in this Tintinna Gold Belt host to Pogo. Uh, and for the listener, we were there before a Northern Star, uh, but also Fort Knox and Tongland. So we have a terrific geological domain um, in that project. And then Mount Carrington, advanced gold and silver, northern New South Wales, Jork Resources, Jork Reserves, PFS done, and we get free carried through the development stages with ASX listed Thompson Resources. So my encouragement to the judge would be to consider White Rock. You get great exposure to three commodities, three projects in three jurisdictions. You'd become a top five shareholder with a company with great momentum. We were only a market cap of 8 million this time last year, and now we're 40. And with significant news flow from the Alaskan season we've just had and the drilling that we're commencing and doing in Victoria. Thank you. Wonderful, Matt. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, to our judges, please. Matt, three um three very interesting projects there. Just just wondering how you prioritise your time and and capital between the three, and if, if I force you to pick one, uh, which would be the most exciting in your view? So probably uh, Matt in reverse order. You're supposed to love all your children, um, but clearly in in um, ascending order, Mount Carrington, uh, which White Rock listed on. Um, is now being developed by ASX listed uh, Thompson Resources, so we're free carried. So we, in fact, other than joint venture committee meetings, um, we're the minor joint venture partner, even though that project is still ours. So that, that's actually a really good um, project advancing situation where it doesn't consume a lot of our time or our money. I think that's really important. So that's a really good cornerstone uh, asset for the investor. 
Um, then we've got Alaska. Alaska is seasonal, so we can handle that. Um, you know, the season in Alaska is roughly from May to, to September, but we've got a terrific team in country and in this COVID world, that's essential. Um, and so it's run out of uh, a very experienced team of about 40 people, contractors, drillers, geophysicists, et cetera, out of Fairbanks. So again, um, you know, we don't try and run that from Ballarat. And, and then right now, um, having just acquired the Woods Point Gold Project here in Victoria, again, in the COVID world, it's only a four hour drive from where I am here in Ballarat. And that's our focus. So we, we can actually manage that across those three jurisdictions and time zones. Um, and stage of project. Thanks. Judges? Mark, can you, um, can you just give us a bit of a flavour about, you know, what kind of, what you're actually targeting in the Alaskan asset, what you're targeting in the Victorian asset, what it might look like if you got what you were looking for? Yeah, so we're two-pronged two -pronged attack. Um, the Silver Rich Think VMS, um, the 9 million tonnes that, that is over 13% zinc equivalent, Two jork resources open along strike and down dip. So we did some drilling there again this year. Um, what should that look like? We'd like to double that tonnage, that sort of grade. Um, being polymetallic, that 13% zinc equivalent is the same as 600 grams a tonne silver equivalent. So very high, high value uh, in situ value per tonne. So we'd like to add resources to that. Um, there are multiple targets. So that's the VMS side. We also only in January last year announced this 15 square kilometre large IRGS gold project um, in the western part of the tenement package. And, and that's not dissimilar to Nova Gold, um, Fort Knox. So we, we've got two prongs, a gold and a, and a silver rich zinc VMS. Paula, yeah. I think you were, oh, if sorry. You, if, you, if you had to, um, sort of put your, the company in a, in a peer uh, group. Um, are there any similar players that you can compare yourself in terms of, of where you sit in, in valuation and um, how undervalued do you think you are? Because, you know, most, most, <laughs> most extraction companies think they are. Uh, and, and, you know, fairly enough, most are. What do you think about that? Yeah, look, that's a really good question. So we are a little bit unusual. So we're, we're not a one trick pony where we can just compare ourselves to a Victorian gold explorer yeah. or an Alaskan explorer. Um, what I can tell you is, is that just on a Victorian gold explorer peer table, we are in the bottom quartile. Mm -hmm. um, and that's without considering our Alaskan and our New South Wales assets. Mm -hmm. So just, just, that alone. Um, and yes, you're dead right. I will never be the last MD that says we're undervalued yeah. um, because clearly if there is a value gap, then that's the opportunity for the investor. And I think my job is to try and extract some of that value um, for, for the investor. Um, flipped another way, when we merged with the Victorian asset, there had to be an independent expert valuation um, and that valued White Rock um, middle value at 80 million and a top value of 140 million. Uh, and our current market cap is only 40 million. So a okay. couple of metrics that you can look at it that way that I think shows, and that's what encourages me to, to try and get that value gap closed by getting that value into our share price. Yeah, yeah, perfect, thank you. So, so Matt, um, on the Alaskan project, Red Mountain, um, you know, South 32, and there's a bunch of folks poking around up there, but if you actually produce a base metals mine, where would you ship the concentrate? Just speak to us about that. Yeah, so Kingsley, we're, we're only about 80 kilometres due east of the main Parks Highway between Alaska and Fairbanks. So uh, concentrates produced a zinc con and a, and a silver lead con. Um, truck to the railhead, that rail goes to Anchorage or, or weather seaport, and then in concentrate either off to Japan or China. Uh, it's probably unlikely to go to the trail smelter in BC, um, but that's obviously possible. So lots of options once it's in a boat in the, in the uh, Northern Pacific. Time for one more question, judges. And just in, in Victoria, there's lots of people, lots of juniors now trying to find the next fossil fuel down there, um, probably without too much success. Just wondering what, in your view, what's needed to crack the code? Yeah, look, that's a good question. So Matt, we've got a really good 670 square kilometre land package with over 10 historical mines collectively produced over a million ounces. 
Uh, that Morning Star mine itself was the forerunner to Western Mining um, that produced 800,000 ounces. So we've got a fairly good understanding of the regional geology, the dike swarm that we're in. Um, I, I, I'm living here in Ballarat. I ran the Ballarat gold mine. Um, I was also in Tassie. So I understand that Victoria narrow vein, high grade nuggety gold reefs are volatile. Uh, when you get onto them, they're fantastic, but it's not for the faint hearted. But therein lies the opportunity. Um, if you understand the geology, you understand the volatility, um, you have faith in your geologists and, and you go with that and the drill bit, um, I think the results can, can speak for themselves. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Matt, very much for your time. Really appreciate it.